Hello there. I hope you're doing well today. My name is Dr. Katherine Garforth and today I have the pleasure of talking to Dr. Jennifer Buckingham. Today we're going to be speaking about orthographic mapping. So how does <clears throat> teaching phonics in a systematic synthetic approach that's laid out sequentially and you're making sure the student learns all the letter sound correspondence help support the orthographic mapping? There's a few ways that um, a synthetic phonics approach helps that orthographic um, math, uh, mapping process take place. One is by, um, first of all, just really making the understanding of the concept of um, print to speech and um, speech to print understandable, that it's a reversible process, that it's um, relatively predictable once you know some of the rules and some of the exceptions and why there are exceptions. Um, it helps with that blending because it's introduced very early. Um, the selection of GPCs in a good synthetic phonics program will be really carefully done. Um, so we know, for example, that children will be able to blend continuous sounds more easily when they're learning to read than, than um, stop sounds. So for example, it's easier to blend Sam than tin. Um, if you're a beginning reader, because you can el lead the, the sounds together, you can elongate them and, and then blend them together and then say them the, the faster way. So that's, that's one way that a synthetic phonics approach works. The other is that it, it really draws attention to those graphophonic properties. Um, there's a lot of practice there's cumulative review, there's mastery, there's all of those things that we know about how children learn and move things in from their short-term and working memory into long-term memory and therefore become fluent. So there are so many ways in which a synthetic phonics approach um, uh, is um, aligned to our understanding of orthographic mapping, that it, it just makes sense that, that, that it will you know, one will eventually lead to the other. Again, there's there's uh, variation amongst different children, but it it is the approach by which we know most children will learn to read most quickly. And some children, after learning, you know, most of the code, will go into that self teaching phase, and they'll start to see the the patterns. They will um, put that together in a way that allows them to make um, a transference from what they have explicitly learned to new and unfamiliar words. For other children, they need the whole code taught explicitly and systematically. But we don't know which children at the start of the teaching process are going to take off partway through and start to self-teach um, and the ones that are going to need to be taught explicitly the whole lot. So the best thing is to plan to teach all children the entire code. That way there are no gaps um, and we can be pretty confident that all children are going to be able to decode fluently um, and that orthographic mapping process will take place that leads to that automaticity. Um, and the ability, and I guess it's really important to mention here, the whole point of doing this is so they can read for meaning and enjoyment. And so yeah. it's a means to an end. Um, and so, you know, I just wanted to state that because there is always the accusation that when you're focusing on word level reading, that it's still mechanical and, you know, you're ignoring the, the other aspects of literacy. And of course we're not, this is a means to an end. This is how we get children to enjoy reading. Um, and the reason they enjoy reading is because they don't find it hard. And that, that's the aim. Exactly. And I, I feel it's important to definitely highlight that decodable books are a great place to start because in those books, you're getting children to read words that they have the skills to decode and so that they know what they need to do. And you can pre-teach, you know, those five to 10% of words that may be in the book that aren't decodable based on their current skill set. And then they're able to get through these readers fairly quickly once they figure out the process and move on to those texts. Whereas when we're using the predictable texts that highlight, you know, guessing and using the context clues or the pictures, you're not really facilitating the student in looking at those letter sound correspondences and being able to map those words. 
I'm really glad you mentioned that because that um, is so important, that decodable text in, in the early stages particularly, so that um, children are getting that exposure to or repeated exposure to the same sorts of um, spelling patterns and then they become uh, mapped and embedded. And, um, yes, I mean, early decodable text, um, th they can seem quite constrained um, but then so does early predictable text. It's, you know, they've, it's, it's super boring, the early predictable readers. So, but they don't have the benefit of actually achieving the goal that you're looking for either. So, um, and then decodable readers actually, the, the newer ones that are becoming available now um, are really great when they start to add, you know, more into the phonic sequence. And you don't have to get very far into a phonic sequence before you start to be able to write if, if you're clever. And there are some very clever writers of decodable books. We, I'll um, uh, have to mention some, you know, the, the authors of the um, multi-lit decodable books, they're called initial lit readers, are so clever. Their imaginations and their facility with English language is just, um, it's quite astounding. You know, <laughs> when I read them, I think, you know, to be able to come up with the little stories that they do with the small number of, of letters and letter combinations that they're allowed within the phonic scope and sequence is, um, is, is really quite amazing. But it doesn't take long before you can start to write little stories that are actually really engaging and has some interesting vocabulary and other sorts of language features. So, um, yeah, I hate to see Dakota books sort of written off as being always not authentic literature. Sometimes they're just as good <laughs> as anything else I see on the market that are, you know, that are natural language children's books. So the, the line kind of gets blurred the more you move through the code and more GPCs that can be included. In those very early stages, though, it's all about the orthographic mapping and the automaticity and the blending. Yes, and I'd argue that any skill, you have to start at the basics. I mean, think about learning how to walk or playing the piano or learning mm -hmm. how to roll over. Like, you have to do the same thing repeatedly until those muscles get the memory and are ability, able to do it. So why would it be any different from reading? Yeah, precisely. I think those analogies are great. Yeah.